All right, so today we're gonna to be fixing the timing chain tensioner O-ring. Basically what it is, it's a little O-ring or a gasket that goes on the timing chain tensioner. It looks just like that. And you'll have it on a Toyota Celica GT or GTS. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. All you need is this piece. I bought it directly from Toyota. At AutoZone, you can get it for about 10 bucks. If you go directly to Toyota, they charge me about $4.90. So really, really cheap. And you also want a pair of gloves because it's pretty greasy back there. It's been leaking, so let's go ahead and do that. And I'll be doing this on a cold engine. Uh, two reasons, if it's hot and you just drove, there might be oil still on the top of the engine leaking down, so maybe a little bit could leak out. But the other reason is obviously the back where the exhaust is, back here where we're going to be working. It's going to be burning hot, so let that cool down. Alright, and if you come here to the back of the engine, it's really hard to see on camera. But even if you look straight down, you still can't see it. But if you just reach your hand down there, I'll show you where it is. It's kind of hard to see, but it's a ways down there, and you can feel the two 10 millimeter bolts. And if you're having a hard time finding it, just look at the engine, come down here, you'll see this little 10 millimeter bolt sticking out to the side right here. And the one we're gonna be undoing is this 10 millimeter bolt right here. And if you feel kinda one inch downward, there's another one, it's an oval shape. So we'll go ahead and remove that. All right, and just like that, you'll see I got the two 10 millimeters off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull that whole wedge out of there. All right, so after pulling on it for a long time, I could not get it. I was about to grab a rubber mallet to tap on it and then it just randomly fell out. So I don't know about that, but looking at it, you can see it's worn down. You can see where the chain drags across it. Um, these are about 35 to $40 new. So now would be a good time to replace it. But what I'm gonna be replacing today is this gasket. It's an O-ring gasket. So we're gonna just take uh, either our finger or our screwdriver gently pry that old gasket off we're gonna clean it up wipe off the oil and wipe off all the sludge between here there may be a gasket that goes here as well and this gasket does seem a little bit hard there's some minor wear and tear in it I don't know if this is where the leak is coming from but it's worth a try for four dollars so what I did is I gently took a screwdriver or a plastic wedge kind of pried that out now we're gonna roll it down the body careful not to reset this but what I mean by that I don't know exactly how you do it, but I believe if you pull this pin, you can retract that pin. But if you do that, you'd have to readjust the timing chain tensioner by cranking the bottom crankshaft. All right, and what I did is I took some degreaser, cleaned off the outside. I want to clean this inner surface really good so we can make a fresh seal. I'm also going to try to reach back in the engine. I don't want to shove anything into the hole, like any gunk or old oil debris, but I'm going to try to wipe off the surface so it does make a clean seal. And what I'm gonna do is take the new ring, coat it in new, the keyword is new, engine oil, and we're gonna replace that. As you can see, what I've done here is slid the new one on. I wanna be careful not to roll it as much as possible, so I just evenly have been sliding it down, and now that's in the groove. And it is a lot fatter than the other one, so maybe this will fix the issue. And that's what the hole looks like when the tensioner is out of it. And it can only go back in one way. And while I'm down here, I'm gonna try to clean up some of the grit and as well as the seal and put new oil around it so it'll seal well. I went ahead and cleaned that so the surface is pretty clean. I'm gonna wipe off the threads as well, try to get some of the grit out of there and slide the tensioner back into place. All right, and one thing to take note of, this is the proper orientation. This indentation, that huge dot, that's gonna go towards the passenger side. So as you can see, there's all the pulleys over here, stuff like that. So we're having issues sliding it back in like this. So what I'm gonna do is fully retract it and put this locking pin back over it, as you can see here. So let's fold that back. And to do that, you just kind of push here with your fingernail and a screwdriver would work as well. You just kind of wrestle it down like that. All right, and just like that, we got it locked back into place, so now it'll slide in easily. All right, now I'll go ahead and tighten that down. Now with that back in place, and I tighten the two 10 millimeter bolts back on the tensioner, and it's fully tensioned down. Some people would start the engine, do not do that, it's very bad for it. So what we actually need is a 19 millimeter wrench and a socket. Possibly a breaker bar would give you more leverage, but then you won't be able to ratchet it, and you need to spin the crank pulley. If you don't know which one that is, it's gonna be on the very bottom of the engine. Like I said, 19 millimeter socket, and we need it to go clockwise. So to make it go clockwise, if I'm standing on the passenger side, I should be able to pull it this way and ratchet it this way. 
And just to show you the crank pulley, that's this giant one down here. It's a 19 millimeter. So as we rotate that, this whole serpentine belt will rotate as well. I can hear the tensioner clicking. That's not the ratchet. And I can even hear it pumping up with fluid because it is driven by an oil pressure mechanism. But after about a full 360 of the crank pulley turning, we'll know that it's locked in. And I also haven't heard it click or pressurize anymore. Kind of and so that's how I know it'll be done. And I also did a full rotation of the bottom crank pulley, even though it stopped just to make sure. So I started it up, I let it idle. It idles at about 800 RPM, so that's good. Obviously you don't want to rev it up in case there still is any slack in the timing chain. So that way, um, as it idles, it'll kind of self-adjust. I mean, it should have gone all the way, but just in case, as a safety precaution, uh, timing issues are major. 